these lines as well. There's a north, south, and an east, west. And then your property numbers increase as you go away from that zero point and the baseline. And normally it, it travels in 100 blocks. First, for every block you go, you go up 100 by numbers. And normally even numbers are on one side of the street and odd numbers are on the other side of the street. So that's the perfect world. <clears throat> Philadelphia is probably one of the best examples of that laid out. The, the easy part was it was laid out at kind of one point by Penn. So they took their zero point down around front and market. And then your baselines work off of that. East, West, Market Street, North and South, Front Street. And then all your addresses work off of your baselines. This is great stuff to know if you're trying to find a restaurant in Philadelphia, I guess, too, maybe. So the north-south streets have numbers, and the east-west streets in Philly have names. So very easy to find an address as you go from east to west, the numbers increase. And right, so that's what's the train station known as, right? 30th Street Station, actually on the other side of the Schuylkill here, but starting at zero at, at the Delaware, we're up to 30 at the, the Schuylkill. And then the numbers also run upwards as you go north from the baseline and south from the baseline. So pretty real, pretty easy to find an address, right? If you have a had a call in Philly, super simple to find the 300 block of South Third Street, first, second, third street, one to 300 block. My call's right in here someplace. So great when you have a a system like that. You're going to see. Unfortunately, we don't, but there's certainly Plenty of ways to work around that. Let me just kind of see here. So just some kind of real life examples, the way it, it does work. My red line here is Market Street, City Hall's dead center. As we go north on Broad Street, odds are on one side. Number one broad, North Broad Street is the Masonic Temple. On the west side of the street are the Evens. Pennsylvania Academy of the Arts is, is 118 North Broad, and then Hahnemann Hospital being the next block up is 230 North Broad. So we call the first block the unit block. So the numbers are from zero to 99. Then our second block here is our 100 block. So every address in that block is in the 100 series and 200, 300 as we go north. <clears throat> and then an east-west street in Philadelphia, this is uh, the SEPTA building, 1234 Market Street. As we come up out market, if the call's at 1234 Market, you know it's between 12th and 13th because that's where the 1200 block of Market Street starts, being an east-west street. 1201 is right at 12th Street. And in theory, 1299 should be right here. So great system when it works. Um, Philadelphia, not perfect. There are exceptions and reversals. My favorite is that east of City Hall, all the one-way southbound streets are even. But when you go west of City Hall, the one-way southbound streets are odd. So even a, a good system like Philly, has lots of exceptions to it. So that brings us to the Upper Dublin Township Grid System. So there's no real absolute zero point in Upper Dublin. Anybody want to guess why we don't have uh, many uh, townships don't have an absolute zero point? Because they've changed uh, shape and size uh, over the years and changed names probably too. 
That's certainly one reason, yeah. I'm just looking at who I can see. Shal, how about you? Any? Damn. It was all farmland maybe at one time? Or yeah, there you go. People so owned so much, you know, land at one time. Yeah, so it was farmland, and it wasn't kind of set up at one time. Hey, you know? Kevin, it wasn't a planned development, right? Exactly, yeah. So the township didn't get laid out at one time, much like Philadelphia certainly wasn't as big as it is now, but that center city grid they just continue that pattern. Now, with that being said, uh, Upper Marion has an absolute zero point and a great baseline north, south, east, and west. Rathfine will buy me a couple beers some night. I'll run them through that one. Uh, but for a township that was rural um, and grew in fits and starts, it's got a, a really good zero absolute zero baseline. Uh, so Upper Dublin, no, no absolute zero. I call it a soft baseline, Tennis Avenue on the west and Pennsylvania Avenue on the south. <clears throat> so it gives us a few general rules, but cross streets are critical. And I know, Larry, remember that's always been my thing with you, right? Cross streets, cross streets, cross streets. So cross streets that are gonna kinda save the day for you and keep you out of trouble. So there's the Upper Dublin map. If you look to the left, we got our Tennis Avenue, north-south baseline. And then we have our Pennsylvania Avenue, roughly baseline to the south. So what that gives us is as a general rule, Numbers as you go north from Pennsylvania Avenue go up, and as you go east from Tennis, go up. So Welsh Road at Tennis is 100. As we get up to Prudential, I forget, I think it, I forget what the, the number is off the top of my head, but the numbers. 2101. Thank you. The numbers increase that way. Same thing's true on Pennsylvania Avenue. The BB and T Bank is 101. We get up to the fire house 1245. So the numbers are increasing northbound. So there's kind of my numbers there 100 to 1200 northbound and they east and west. So it works well, but there are lots of exceptions. Now my my blue arrow is showing that, for instance, in East Orland on Wishman, as you come off of Twining, you're in the 100 block. And as you travel westbound, the numbers increase. So it's kind of the opposite. You're going towards tennis, but the numbers are going down. So that's where we don't have an absolute zero. If we did, when they had laid this development out, they would have made the 100 block here and made the you know 600 block here. Some other exceptions we have is we don't always put odds and evens on opposite sides. <clears throat> so Lindenwald Avenue, number one Lindenwald, that was one of the ones we walked through last year, oh, sorry, there's that technology layer. Um, I keep pointing my pen to the screen, but apparently you guys can't see that. One Lindenwald is down at the corner of Bethlehem Pike, and as you go up the street, the numbers just go sequentially. There's no even odd to Lindenwald Avenue. This is in, the, in our map book. I think this is my favorite example. Chavon is sequential, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But then you go across the street and it goes not quite sequentially. They squeezed number 11 in there somehow. So that one's a little, 
And then our 100 blocks don't have a real system to them as well. We have some pretty big jumps. So Fort Washington Avenue, as we come northbound off of Pennsylvania Avenue, cross 309, you're in the 500 block. As soon as you cross Highland, you go into the 1,000 block. The good news is Highland Avenue is pretty consistent there across, you know, from Camp Hill over to Bethlehem. Pretty much everything north of that is that 1,000 split, and below it is the 500 split. So the way we get around all of that is just really focus on our cross streets. The county, CAD, uh, is, you know, super uh, dialed in on each address and it's able to place where it is on the map and then it's able to give us cross streets. So it's the cross streets that are gonna get you to the right section of Welsh Road. So let's define what cross streets are. Again, just kind of taking it back to the basics for some folks that might not know. So if we have a, a call at 123 Main Street and we're on Main Street, we kind of don't know where it is. If we're, if we're down at the, the sign that says Main, we're not sure how, how far we have to travel down here. Or if we're coming up Cat Street, do I turn right or left on Main? I'm not sure where, unless there's an absolute zero that starts here at the courthouse, let's say, and I can make a guesstimate. So that's where our cross street's going to help us. And our dispatch is going to tell us that it's on 123 Main Street, your cross streets being Cat Street and Bird Street, so then we know what block it's in. So I just pulled a few recent calls, and these are actually the you know notes from the county. So 657 Dresher Town Road, cross streets are Oriel Lane and Dresher Town Road, and sure enough, there's the address. It always throws me off though, to be honest. When I hear you know cross streets, I'm I'm just always thinking mid block, right? And look at that number. 657, you would think that a 57 would be in mid block, maybe, or like if it was the end of the block, it would be more like 690, getting ready to switch to the 700 block. But that's not the way it necessarily works. So I do get thrown off by these sometimes. I come, come wheeling up there and you make the, the turn on the dresser town expecting it to be in mid block. The cross street doesn't mean where it is in that block, it just means it's somewhere between Oriel and Dresher Town. You know, some streets you really don't have to worry about the cross street because it's only a block long. So we got to run the Hagee's Mill Road. It doesn't really matter with the cross streets because cross streets will always be Bethlehem and Butler. There can be no other cross streets. This is that uh, interesting home too. I think we talked about it a while at another training. This is the one the train, the uh, driveway comes out here. Actually, the driveway is on Bethlehem Pike. It's a Hagee's Mill Road address. Um, so some streets, you know, aren't as critical if they're only a block long. Another way to get thrown off and it happens to me sometimes is when the county uses cross streets, the nearest cross streets, they may not be within our township. So when we go to DSW Shoe Warehouse, 3638 Wells Road, and the cross streets, Carlson Drive and Twining, Carlson's an upper dub, uh, I'm sorry, upper Moreland Street, and obviously Twining is ours. So you'll find that on Fitzwater Town Road, North Hills Avenue, Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, Bethlehem Pike, and Tennis, as well as Welsh. So any of our border streets, you might get thrown off a little bit by uh, an Abington Street 
I can't say I'm as familiar with the Abington Street, so when they give us Anzac, um, Anzac, I guess, and Oriole are probably are the common one down there. Well, you know where Oriole is, hopefully. That's just mm. above Susquehanna. But it's just one, just one more thing to be aware of. If it's a street you're not familiar with, it's because they're using the closest cross street, not the Upper Dublin. If it was an Upper Dublin cross street, they would use Kimball and Twining. But the closest ones are Carlson and Twining. And cul-de-sacs can be a little bit of a challenge as well. This one's not too bad, Cinnamon Circle. We just have to be careful with Cinnamon Circle versus Cinnamon Drive. Uh, the way you, you know, other than Drive and Circle being different, Cinnamon Drive will give you two cross streets. Uh, Cinnamon Circle will only give you one. It'll give you cul-de-sac is first and Susquehanna Road is the second. So a, a cul-de-sac road only has one cross street. And my least favorite one we go to is Sal John Circle because the cross street is cul-de-sac and Shalimar and that doesn't help me at all. Shal Shalimar is not bad because your cross street is cul-de-sac and Dillon. It's like, oh, okay. I, I know where Dillon is, but Salajan, and that doesn't do me a whole lot of good. <clears throat> so I'm going to just tell you what I, how my brain works uh, for addressing or how I find a place. Whether you find it helpful or not, it's okay. Each guy probably has their own little system, but I'll just kind of tell you the way I do it and uh, how it works. Appreciate all the great feedback I'm getting here, guys. This is really wonderful to be able to. <laughs> great job, great job. Keep it up, keep it up. That's hey, a you're really, doing such a good job. You don't need any feedback. It's a really, really, really nice table. Yeah, yeah, that is a, it. Now you know I wanted to picture your table. So I call it the four legs. I need four pieces of data uh, before I go out the door. I try to get them. I don't always if we're, running late and, uh, you know, the crew's on the truck and ready to rock and roll. But I try to get four pieces before I go out the door. The four legs for me is what I stand to call on. Again, it's the way my brain works. It may not be what works for you, but find a system I would advise and, and try to work that. So I try to set that location in my head. And the first thing I look for is I'm just really interested in the street name and the common place name. <clears throat> Not so worried about the numeric, the street number yet. You know, so if it's uh, 525 Meeting House Road, I'm not as focused on the 525. I'm thinking Meeting House is the, the critical part. <clears throat> Zach, do you have any stories about common place names that are able to throw you off? Are you talking about like uh, the name of the building? Yeah. So like the one that throws me off is when I see Rite Aid, right? So Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, I see Rite Aid. I all, we had an alarm there a couple of weeks ago, and I see the commonplace name Rite Aid. I first think Lock Ash and Bethlehem, and I, I got to be careful not to ignore the other three legs of my table. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple – that I've screwed up on, on a couple of different occasions. One is I won't always look up where I'm going or double check myself. Like, and I, that's when I've screwed up. If I go over the address three times in my head or say it, I won't screw it up. So like sometimes we'll go to Dunkin' Donuts all the way down Welsh closer to Abington. And sometimes I'll have a picture in my head of the Dunkin' Donuts that's on the Horsham side near like Welsh and Norristown or the Hilton and the Holiday Inn. I've gone to the wrong one before. Like just because I'm going to the Holiday Inn and it's really the Hilton. So now I try to, to say it, either say it out loud to myself in the car or go over my head three times. Because if you go just off one piece, I know myself, that's where I've screwed up personally. And that's why, Zach, you may notice I always try to verbalize it to the officer right before we pull out. That kind of checks me to make sure that, you know, it's kind of like the pilot calls out 27 right to make sure that that's where we're supposed to be. I'll tend to say uh, where we're going 
so the officer can check my work. But just be careful that commonplace name. Look at it, uh, but also look at the address. Yeah, it's, it's just like repeating a, a message over the radio. If someone gives you orders and you repeat it so that, you know, you guarantee you're both on the same page. So I look at Cross Street 1, Cross Street 2, and then the box number. <clears throat> Again, just the way I, I do it, 525 Meeting House. I'm thinking Meeting House, be, you know, uh, between Friends Lane and uh, Butler Pike and, you know, box 24. That's what I'm trying to lock into my mind. <clears throat> so here's what, a, you know, a dispatch looks like. And so those four legs I have numbered, one is the address, 1A being a common place name, two and three are my cross streets, and four is my map book page. Okay. So, yeah. On that too, I just, on the common place name too, if it's, um, if it's a, a rental property as far as commercial rental and they, a new place goes in, sometimes there's a lag in getting the correct name um, added in like at the, the Indian restaurant up there. I know at one point they were dispatching it as the old name versus the new uh, tenant. Yeah, no question. There's, you know, they're not a hundred percent. So um, yeah, good point. Thanks. So 1925 Norristown Road between Lime Kiln and Welsh giant food store. We should be able to figure out where that is. You know, that's in the uh, Maple Glen shopping center. Uh, so the only thing I kind of really want to look at then is map page three to find out where my hydrants are. That's what I'm looking at. So this is just a, a non-commercial or residential address with no commonplace name. So I'm just looking at Tally Ho between three tons and Butler, 12. That's kind of the, the four things I'm thinking. Tally ho, three tons, Butler, and 12. Now, we'll talk about uh, run routes in a little bit, um, and it's certainly a tool for you to use. Um, so these are the run routes out of both stations. The top one is the main station. The bottom one is Burn Beret. So right on Fort, left on Susquehanna, right on Butler, left on Tally ho. So that's another way that you can find Tally Ho. Not necessarily the right block though, we'll talk about that in a little bit. The run routes aren't giving you the block, they're giving you the street. So another Kevin, thing you can Kevin, do- real quick, Zach brought up a point about repeating the address in your mind, which is a good practice and either have a conversation with the, the driver, but there's some departments around the county that are going in service and repeating the address over the air, which to me, I think is a waste of air time. Um, with the ex one exception of if you have multiple calls going on at the same time, to give county an idea where that particular unit is headed. So another uh, tool that you can use, again, use whichever tools work for you is on I am responding, you can go down to the bottom left of the dispatch detail and press the little map icon and it'll tell you how to get there. Up Fort, out meeting, this one takes you out meeting house, right on Butler and a left on Tally Ho and it- Hey Kev. Yeah. While, you, while we're on that, um, also a reminder, if everyone can try and use I am responding just because we're, with the limited uh, response that we're doing now, it, it really helps to see if there's uh, drivers or people coming so we know if we need to wait or if we have to go. Um, everybody's been pretty good, but there's a couple of calls where um, guys weren't using it. Sorry, go back. Yep, so another tool you can use. I tend to just go to that map page that uh, I looked at in the very beginning and so I see here's Butler, here's three tons, they were my two cross streets. So I know that it's in this first block. And then I'm thinking probably do a, you know, this is a, I'm not, I think that actually this is on the south side, but I would know that um, by just those cross streets. But this is probably the hydrant 
I'm going to grab. Another alternative, though, is you certainly could come out stout, make the right on three tons, and grab this hydrant. You know it's in this block here somewhere because they're your two cross streets. So um, the beauty of using the map book is you can plan your attack a little bit, both as first in engine and second in engine. You can kind of think what might be a, a good way to, to do that. Now, when it comes to the turnpike, uh, I always love those dispatches. I-76 westbound, I-76, 476 northbound, the 476 eastbound to the ramp to 309 east 76. Like, you got me. So there's a couple of things you can do in this case. Ask the officer, put it on him. <laughs> um, couple tricks I use for the turnpike. And you know, we, it really gets confusing when it's on one of the ramps. Uh, you know, we've had some pretty good crashes, northbound 309, it's a split. Um, you know, we certainly always get that one, the off-ramp, eastbound off-ramp to uh, the toll gate. Um, I can't see where it is because guys' pictures are blocking me, but just to the right of my pointer there. Um, so they, they can get a little bit more uh, complex. And that's where you, before you commit yourself, you really want to make sure that you have some updated information or good data that you're working off. Because, you know, once you start swinging down that ramp and you get, there's no going back. So if the crash was at the top of this ramp, you got to go to Norristown and make the flip. So a couple tricks I, I use on a turnpike. I'm a little dyslexic, so I really struggle with that east-west sometimes, especially we're leaving the firehouse, we're heading southbound, and I got to figure out where east is. East is, I always think of to my right, but as you're coming down Fort Washington Avenue, it, it's all, it's confusing. <laughs> so one of the things I look at is the dispatch and say, this tells me it's between Fort Washington and Norristown, and it also tells me that it's on our side. Now you could look up here and see that it's a westbound call, westbound going towards Harrisburg, eastbound going towards New Jersey. But the cheat that I always use is this bottom line to see who's on the dispatch. So when I see it's us first, it's our direction, which means we're getting on, or at least the first truck. And I know we're going towards Norristown. And when I see this one, I say, well, it's between, it's coming from Norristown. We're, we're not getting on. We're standing by at the, the gate, um, but it's between Norristown and us. And then, of course, the same thing's true going towards Willow Grove. This is now ours. It's an eastbound call. And if we look up here, well, this was on the ramp actually, but we know it's our direction and it's going towards Willow Grove. Actually, it's the, it's at the exit right in Willow Grove because it's the 611 uh, exit. And then of course, I don't have an example of that, but if it, if it listed the 10 units first and the 88 units, it would be between Willow Grove and here, but coming towards us, the only thing to be careful with that one a little bit, it may be between Virginia Drive and the interchange, meaning we can catch it by getting on at Virginia Drive, even though it's in Willow Grove's first due, um, we can catch it because we can get, up, get on there at Virginia Drive. Out of town gets a little bit more complex, and there's a couple of tricks we can do here. I know sometimes I've confused guys when we're going into the borough, and I say map page 48. So we have 47 map pages in Upper Dublin, and thanks to Krim, aka Joe Exotic, we have added a page 48. We have redone Ambler's map book. 
to make it easier for us. Hey, Kev? Yeah. We actually uh, used this at the Maple Avenue fire. Okay. Um, I gave it to uh, Lesniak had command, so um, I don't know if he had if 33 had one or not, but we did use it, so it was helpful because we had to, he had to direct units in from different directions. Good. So the way the Ambler book works is all of their streets are on an index behind that map. Again, it's, it's page 48, so Upper Dublin's 47, Ambler 48. So if you look, uh, you know, it was a Euclid Avenue is in zone C. So we look here in zone C and yeah, I get that it's a little bit harder to find, but uh, there's Euclid's off of Bethel and Pike. Here we go. And so, I mean, at least it gives you um, a general direction. So Ambler's actually pretty simple. Their map book, though, those hydrants are all confirmed for location, but they are not marked for Ambler thread. Remember, our, our map books have Ambler thread marked by an A, 25 different uh, hydrants in our township have Ambler thread as opposed to national standard. I have no idea how many in a borough have Ambler thread. They are not marked in our, our book. <clears throat> yeah, another thing to take a look at on the dispatch, again, this will be on a printout. It'll also be on the, the, uh, the monitor up on the wall, but take a look at the municipality. Springfield, and two other pieces of information for you to look at going out of town. Because sometimes if you use the button we're found going up to Montgomery, uh, it's directed us to an address in like Sarah Clarita, California. You know, it doesn't recognize Holly Hill Drive or something. <clears throat> so what I'm looking at going out of town, first I want to see the municipality, their box number. So we have multiple uh, surrounding townships. We have every township certainly that touches Upper Dublin and we also have Montgomery's in there now. So I could go to page 19 in the Springfield book, but another totally old school trick, um, and you have to have your magnifying glasses to do, eyeglasses to do this. Look at the ADC number, 3370B2. So the old ADC book is in the trucks. If you turn to page 3370 and go to quadrant B2 in that map book, you will find Pennsylvania Avenue between uh, April and Bala. So that's helpful sometimes when you're going to a place like Montgomery or Whitpain that it's, you know, Hidden Hills Drive, you have no idea where that is. The cross streets you've never heard of either. You can look at the ADC book to at least let you know, well, we're, we got to go out, uh, skip back Pike, and we're going to turn left on Penland Bluebell. And hopefully by then, uh, Chief Z has uh, gotten that book out and looked at it and able to bail my ass out. So um, it at least gets you in the general direction. It's hard to, hard to read, though, because it's, it's pretty detailed and small. <clears throat> this is is that sort of like when I gave you directions for the Concha Hocken fire? Um, your directions were spot on to the Concha Hocken fire. And uh, you used a not, well, you used a commonplace name that didn't appear on the county printout. <laughs> and we'll talk about that when we're off. We're not public. <laughs> so here's a Horsham box. Um, one of the things I find with other township boxes, sometimes I, they're a little bit harder to read because they just do them differently. We're used to our boxes. We keep them pretty clean, pretty lean, don't have a lot of detail on them. We don't, you know, do the, the pictures and stuff. But at any rate, and I believe their colors are supposed to, signify their GPM that they get out of their hydrants. Um, but
But one of the issues I find with Horsham is their boxes are really pretty small, and sometimes it's hard to get uh, that main scrub, that main cross street, Moreland or Blair Mill or something that that gets you to the to the immediate neighborhood. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, Springfield Township map. I just wanted to throw that in because that is that new development there off of Camp Hill Road, that townhouse development. We may go there sometime. Certainly, this this is another one that we could get to is Harkswell Circle off of Pennsylvania Avenue. But this is just the way that Springfield does their maps. And Center Square's maps. These. Uh, Willow Groves look almost identical. They, they're using some kind of a proprietary software to generate these, so they have a very similar look to them. So that is my addressing 101. So I ask, does anybody have any questions or comments on that, please? Hey, no questions, Kev. Uh, good job. Hey, Kevin, Kevin, can you go over the boxes and how they run in Upper Dublin? Yeah, um, uh, actually, I'm going to let Andrew get in on that. And it's just, I, I don't, um, my, my <laughs> brain doesn't work with that. So I don't really worry about that, to be honest. And I know, Krim, you're really good at, you know, it's one through, I can't even remember. What is it? One, what's Prudential? Uh, Ten? 10 or 11, it goes across the top, right? Yeah, I think it's 1 through 11. Um, and yeah, then... You're on the Welsh Road. Yeah, 12 through... So, hold... Hold on a second. You know, the, the cheat then, Larry, is you can kind of say anything 1 through 20... 27. 27. 1 through 27 is north of the Susquehanna. North of yeah, so you're going to turn right coming out of the station. Um, I, I, I just, so, you know, and anything. Yeah, and, and there's really, Kev, just to add to that, there, there's really nothing fancy to that at all. When, right. To me, it was just an easy way, because I'm not like Clausen, where like, you know, it's like, and he knows exactly where he's going as soon as he hears a dispatch. So for me, um, 1 through 11 borders Welsh Road. Anything 1 through 27 is north of Susquehanna. Anything 28 to 48, which is our Ambler, right, is south of Susquehanna. That's it. That, that's it's really down and dirty, real basic. There's nothing to it. And that's just, like you said, Kev, whatever works for you. For me, that was just a way that it was easy for me to try and get my first orientation to where we were going. So does anybody have any other kind of tricks, tips, shortcuts that they use when for addressing? Uh, Kevin, I have a question. Uh, for all the Springfield boxes, are there different uh, beginning box numbers for each different township, uh, like Orland, Flor Flower Town, and uh, Winmore? Yeah, it's always – well, the the box is always going to – to start with the township number and then the third page number. So I'm, I'm not sure if that's what your question is. So yeah, it was if like the tw like if 28 is like Winmore or Flower Town, like which no, 28 Springfield. Yeah, the, uh, the numbers apply to the municipalities and typically the police departments will go by that number as well. So, like, yeah, but he's asking, does the second number indicate which station's box it is? And the answer is no. No. Okay, no, so it's 28 for all of Springfield. I think Correct. Sheltonham does that. Sheltonham's boxes, the second part is the station. Because they have three pieces then? Does it, is it like? No, no, like if it's 26 with a one, it's a, it's a Glenside box. Right. If it's a two, it's a Lamont box. Okay. Um, that's the only one I know that does that, though. And I know, doesn't Abington have like a three series box number? No, they have a letter and then a number. Now they'll have a three series if it's like a, like the mall gets its own, because um, it's a high hazard occupancy. 
but most of them are it's a 29 and then a letter and then a number and what's the letter do? it's like the it's almost like the adc it's the um, the map book they use yeah i mean you go if it's like b bravo 2 you go to you know they have a, a grid system set up and you just you basically go to page b2 okay the three digit numbers in abington is usually a sub box within the main box like the mall okay <laughs> Hey, Kev? Yeah. For specific addresses, I don't know if this is you or Zach or Andy, um, you had up earlier that 1105 Heggs Mill Road address. Um, running to that one day, I want a different direction than the map book says. Is there a way to put into the CAD? Um, because that's that funky one that comes in off of Bethlehem Pike. That, that take that right there. turn from Heggs Mill into that driveway is a nightmare. So you're better off going to Bethlehem Pike Way. Yeah, I mean, the address does say access off of Bethlehem Pike. It does say that now, Art, because the one time when I went out there with uh, Vernick, it didn't say that. That's why I was wondering. And, it, Brooks, that's a good point. Um, a number of our addresses – now have additional notes that we've been putting in. Okay. So we're trying to look at all 9,000 addresses at some point, but um, we'll even put down if it's a flag lot, because I miss flag lots. It's like we had one down on Meeting House Road between Friends Lane and Butler Pike. When you kind of come down the street, you know, it's like 526, 528, and you're looking at the houses, and it's like, oh man, there's, there's a driveway that's that has three houses back the driveway. Yeah. And that really kind of uh, screws you up. Um, so we're trying to put any oddball features of an address in what's called the access information. So that should come up with the dispatch. It also is on the MDTs as well then. Yeah, Kev, going along with that, that's why it's uh, really important that people check the notes on the computer when they're when they're responding to the call because you would if you don't pull it up and you didn't like Brooks knows if he goes to that address what the best access is, but if someone else is going there and they didn't know and they don't look and check the notes, you could you could potentially go the wrong way um, and increase our, our our response time or you know screw up the, the hose light or something like that. So um, the computers are there. But, you should definitely at least take a look. I'm not saying you have to watch it the whole time, but look and see if there's any special situations like, like the one Brooks was talking about. And we have more and more notes being added all the time, Brooks, with addresses. So, But if, if you do find any ones, please pass them off to me. Yep. You know, anything oddball about an address. Um, you know, there's one we'll talk about. It's a Broad Street address, but the access is off a of Lime Kiln Pike. Mm -hmm. So that's been loaded in to that address. So it's, it is important to look in those notes because um, more and more properties, uh, we're adding notes to them. Anything else on addressing? Zach, how many people did we lose? Did we go, we're down to like three people now? No, we're 44. We're, uh, we're going almost 10 stronger than last week. Wow. Well, let's uh, talk about some new roads and new developments. Kev, one, one more on the address and thing, too. Um, like, say, for um, Fort Washington Avenue, you know, main station going over to Burn Bray or Burn Bray coming to main station, you have a decent amount of time. So instead of finding the exact, you know, last turn, just say, hey, Susquehanna to Twining or, you know, Susquehanna to Fort Washington, just to give the driver a general direction, and then that'll give you time to fine tune your route. You don't have to, you know, wait to pull out to know, the, you know, exactly the last turn you're going to make before you get there. So uh, <clears throat> new developments going up, or they were going up, but <laughs> so Enclave at the Promenade is the housing development. That's the over 55 single family homes that will be behind the shopping center. Up here is Dreshertown Road, not shown on the map, but the east-west border, Dreshertown Road. 
Um, and so again, I can't see it because how do I get rid of this? Maybe minimize that. There we go. Um, this is the shopping center here. We'll talk about again run routes later, but this is Dryden. The run routes uh, after discussion discussion with Chief Rathfon, uh, Burn Brace coming in, Twining to Welsh to Dryden. And 1245 Susquehanna to Virginia to Dresher Town, up Dresher Town, and you're going to be coming in here, and that hooks up the Concourse Boulevard. You'll see that in the next map. But just a couple new streets for us to be aware of Arcade Way, Piazza Way, Galleria Street and Dryden Road, <clears throat> as well as this Concord, Concourse Boulevard. And one of the things, we'll, we'll put this site plan or cleaned up site plan like this in the book, because, you know, here's another, it's like a cul-de-sac. So 352 Concourse Boulevard, Concourse Boulevard, the cross streets are going to be Concourse Boulevard and Concourse Boulevard. It's like, well, that was helpful. So, um, and it's not even the 300 block, it's the circle. This whole thing is the 300 block. It would have been kind of cool if they had gone 300 to 400 and then made, you know, a different series here. But it is what it is. We'll get a, a, a detailed site map in the books to, uh, along with the hydrant locations. We're waiting until the hydrants get placed. We have the map plan where they should be, but that, they don't always get placed there, and I don't want to be paying out that hoagie for the incorrect uh, somebody finding the, the hydrant in the wrong place. The addresses don't go uh, from lower to upper going from your left to right either. They go to the opposite. Yeah, so this is, if we had an absolute zero, the numbers should get lower going away from Welsh Road, right? Welsh Road is up here, so using an absolute zero, the numbers should go down, but that's not uh, the case. So, and they go, they don't follow the east-west rule either, because our most western house is 717, and the numbers go down as you go eastbound. Whereas if you're up on Welsh Road, as you go eastbound, the numbers go up. So now we look at the promenade. That is the commercial property. So to kind of orient you back to Burn Bray, Welsh Road makes the left on Dryden. That brings them down to that arcade way for the residential or makes the right on market for the commercial. 1245 is coming up Dresher Town, making the right in here. It's a serpentine Shelly, uh, but that gets you in. And then there's another access here. This will be our mutual aid partners, I'm sure. 15 will be making their entrance in through here, I would think. So we're going to have apartments above buildings. And then we have commercial, uh, apartments above commercial, and then that parking garage is here. Just a, a rough sketch of that. Again, this will be cleaned up, get in, and put in the books, but kind of showing how the numbering's working there. They did stay consistent with lower numbers, Welsh Road climb as you go. Uh, westbound, although they go up as we go south. Yeah, Kevin, we went over it last week. This is the one box that's going to have the increased response on it. Right. Four and four. Box nine. Yep. Any questions on either the enclave or the promenade? Kevin, do you know if we, we have an updated... Uh, water um like water main map or um from whoever's waters up there 
Uh, I don't know if we have one it, okay. since the development's been put in. I don't think we have that update. We can certainly. Okay. Zach, it's going to be off. Okay. Uh, is it going to be fed off a single main or is it coming in two directions? You know, Tim? I know it comes in off of Dryden, and I believe it also comes in off of uh, Welsh Road. Okay. It does loop around the, the buildings. I guess there's also two bodies of water there we can draft from if worse came to worse. The other side of Welsh Road will be the Horsham water system as well that we could take in. Uh, I believe there's a hydrant at the corner of Dresher Town and Welsh on their side. Yeah, they have a bunch of hydrants along Welsh Road, I think. Good luck trying to get some of them open, but. All right, we good on that then? Madison yeah, just, a question, just a question for the residential. Uh, Section the specifically the cul de sacs that back up to Dresher Town. Did they add any of the hydrants there where 1245 could hit? So, like these, even the 97, 96, how far is that from Dresher Town? Well, there's going to be hydrants in this development. Tim, do you happen to know how many they have in there? Do not, but just remember they're all sprinkled also. But there'll be, okay. there'll be, like any residential kind of street, there'll be hydrants along these roads. You know, there'll be one in the, in this block, I'm sure, or or at least at the corner, probably each corner. So we're not going to have to lay in from Treasure Town Road. I'm sorry, was that your question? I was thinking more like if, if Burn Break came in there, normal way, dried in, in like this 97 through 89. How far is their backyard to Dresher Town? Would we ever, coming from Fort Washington Ave, stop on Dresher Town and pull a line from there? I don't know that question. It's a good one, Paul, That because that certainly is applicable um, for like the townhouses up on Hood Lane. Some of them, you know, you got really good access off of uh, uh, Butler, Butler Pike, you know, I, I'm not sure what this space is here. Is this the cul-de-sac you're talking about, maybe? I can't see your, your pointer, but 97 okay. through 89, like, what's that thick line? Is that a fence? Or That's going to be, there's going to be a berm there. Yeah, okay. And an open space, so it's, it's going to be a little bit of a hike to get a, a line up through there. Well, that answers that. <laughs> yeah, plus, a lot of times they're retention basins and they, they hold water. That, that's what those dashed lines are there, are going to be, I believe, the retention basins. Anything else on the enclave or promenade? Let's go to Madison Estate, which is the new name for the old St. Mary's. So to orient you all the way to your left, north, south on the map is Bethlehem Pike. And then Madison Avenue coming in off of Bethlehem Pike. It's also Madison Avenue. Zach, can you see when I move my pointer, or am I just kind of doing that for my own amusement? I can see oh, it. Can if see you it. want to, um, you can change it to something brighter if you want. Um, yeah, but we can we can all see it, Kev. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I, it's fine. Whatever you're doing, we can see your mouse movement. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah, you can do that. Stuff like that. Uh, clear. Uh, so, Madison Avenue also extends. That's a Borough Street as well. So that's a continuation of that name, Madison Avenue being the name Main Street that comes in. And then we have Greenwich, Hampton, Grayson, Roberts, um, and Dawes. So we'll get a site map for that. I don't think we're going to have very good, if, 
access coming in off of Cedar, the Cedar and Lindenwald entrance, uh, I don't think is going to be very accessible. Tim, do you have any info on that, that uh, how that entrance might look? Do not, but you also have that bridge out by the, the former lake. And I'm not sure what the, uh, the weight's going to be on that bridge. Right. How about water here, Kev or Tim? What, what are they doing water-wise? It's going to be ambler water. They are running on the main. Yeah. Uh, plenty of water, but no pressure is the, the problem there because there's a 10 inch vein that runs down Linden Mall and then on, on Bethel Pike. So, again, there's plenty of water, but no pressure. The castle and the, the medical buildings will both have uh, fire pumps in them. So, that was the bridges in there somewhere that Tim was talking about. I just learned how to use a new toy. Oh. Right, <laughs> right around the Great. Now you don't know how to get it down. <laughs> Good job, McCann. All right. Time to turn that margarita machine off and kind of get concentrating here. <laughs> Larry, I did disappoint you, I hope, with my uh, high-tech stuff. So that's the deal on that. I cleared it for you, Kev. Thank you. All right, let's just kind of run through some run route changes and then uh, – Zach, you're going to have plenty of info for upcoming training nights if, if anybody wants to see some other stuff. But um, run route changes, uh, I think, kind of ties in really well with the addressing 101. So I would like to kind of squeeze that in and, and have a conversation on that. So uh, run routes are in the books on each truck, right? So in the front of uh, before the 1 through 48 tab, you have alphabetical uh, street addresses. Uh, every change of the alphabet starts a new page, with the exception, I think, of Q gets uh, lumped in with P because there's only like three Q streets, so we didn't give them their own page. But um, there's no tabs on this, just kind of page your way through it, find the street. Um, and you'll notice just by looking at this, First one, we got Brian Adams way up there. Uh, one of the changes we'll talk about in a minute is Tannery Wood. We've put some development names in uh, to make it a little bit easier. Uh, when you see the, you know, again, at least you could say we're going to Tannery Wood. Uh, you know, I can start in that direction Why the officer starts to uh, find the exact last turn kind of thing. Aiden Lair Road does have a hundred split, but you know not every street does. And we'll talk about that kind of next. So using a, the run routes again, cross streets are critical. Cross streets, cross streets. That's always the thing with me. And in the run routes, not all streets have the address split. It would just be too. It would make the run routes too cumbersome, and you know it would. You would need a, a separate binder. Krim, I don't know what you're up to, but <laughs> you're, you're the guy in the back of the class, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was muted. I was just saying I noticed Wilfred changed his background. That's all. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, run routes get you to the street, but not necessarily to the block of the call. So uh, that tally-ho, it got you up Butler, left on tally-ho, but it doesn't tell you how close it is to Norristown Road. Get you to the street, not the 100 blocks. And they're a tool. They're a tool for you to use. And I can't read the, let's see here. Um, you know, they're not required that you have to take that way. Because again, tally ho, you might look at it and say, second engine, maybe I'm coming in from uh, that other direction. Uh, what, what was the name of that street? I've just forgotten what's the north-south street. Just what was the other cross street? Tally Ho, Tannery Run. I forget. Nobody else remembers either. Um, but they're a tool. They don't. So 
again, cross streets are critical. Not all streets have address splits. And here's a, a couple examples I'll give you. Glen Drive, and I'm using the, the main station uh, wording. It's the same for Burn Bray. So it tells you, you know, gets you up to, on the Jarrettown Road, then it says, go left on Dublin and then turn right on Glen. Well, you notice it takes you all the way out Dublin to Glen Drive to make the right. Well, if your cross streets are Pembroke and White House, it makes zero sense to go all the way down to Glen to make your right. So just take a minute and think about those cross streets again. Argyle's another example. Our run route for Argyle takes you out Lock Ash, right on Cedar, left on Argyle, which is always an interesting turn with the tower. Well, most of our calls, were, at least I've been on on Argyle, tend to be in the, the first block between Bethlehem Pike and Douglas. So why not continue down Lock Ash, make the right on Douglas, make the left on Argyle, and watch out for the parked cars. Um, but that gets you into that block a little easier. Hey, can we make the run route for the tower, Susquehanna to Cedar, so that makes that turn? I think, Rick, one of the things you're trying to avoid is separate run routes for, for different trucks. I, again, I think that's where I would say, and I'll let the officers jump in there, this is where you have some discretion. If it's in that first block between Cedar and Douglas, it probably would make some sense for you to come down Susquehanna to Cedar rather than out Lock Ash. Yeah, there's no, there's no always and never. You know, the, the running route's a guide. You can always use your discretion. Just if you make a decision, just have a, a reason why you made it. As long as it makes sense, I, I don't think anyone's going to have any issue with how you decide to go. And Ambler Road's another one. You know, it brings you out Highland on the Bethlehem, right on Bannockburn, and left on Ambler. So you pick up Ambler Road. Well, if it's the cross streets are Orchard and Bethlehem, to me, it would make more sense to go all the way down Bethlehem Pike and make the right on either Orchard and then the left, or I'd probably just continue down Bethlehem Pike and make the right on Ambler Road at that point. So now some of them do have splits. And just an example, Avenue J. And I'm not sure why some got them and others didn't, but you know, this one's telling you come in quarry and eight to eight twenty-two, you're gonna go right. Eight thirty-three to nine oh seven, you're gonna go left. Your dispatch would tell you that with the cross streets anyhow, because the right would be a cross street of spear and quarry, and the left would be cul-de-sac and quarry. But that one does have a split, and some do. Um, so one of the things that you try to learn from near misses um, and when things happen, nothing bad occurs, it's always a good lesson to happen. And one of the things that we've seen that streets sometimes can be interpreted more than one way. And it's just a, you know, a common error. Um, and so we looked at streets, anything with a north, south, east, and west, uh, to try to make that a little easier. And, and the, probably the most uh, stark example is we get dispatched to East Lincoln Drive. I think a lot of us just think about it as Lincoln Drive, the woods, Lincoln Drive. Well, it's, it's important whether it's east or west. So what we did in the run books is the true name of that the streets in the Lincoln Drive, uh, I'm sorry, the Woods Complex, are East Lincoln and West Lincoln. That loop is split in a half. So we made a second entry in Lincoln Drive with an East and made a second entry with Lincoln Drive with a W, you know, East for E, e and W. So if you get, 
if you make the mistake and, and drop, if you drop the east from East Lincoln Drive and just go to Lincoln Drive, you're going to see there's now two choices. There's a Lincoln Drive East and a Lincoln Drive West. They all have the duplicate run routes. You know, we took the same run route, but we just placed it uh, in more than one place to make it maybe easier for folks. Uh, so West Office Center Drive, we did an Office Center West. Now there's a little hiccup on that, I'll show you in a minute, but uh, East Bruce Drive, you can look it on, up under Bruce Drive. So a whole bunch of the, anything with an ordinate in front of it uh, has gotten a second entry. So if, if you miss the first part, you're going to still be able to find that street. Hey, Kev, did we ever change the um, run route for Lenape for coming in off of after? Yeah. yeah, I think we changed it. I think we put a split on it, actually. I I'll have to look, but we did something with that. I think it was a, I think it was a split, right? Because there was a cul-de-sac. Yeah, it was a cul-de-sac at the end. Right. Yeah, I think we put a split in on that one. Uh, this is two different locations. You do have to be careful on West Office Center Drive and Office Center Drive. This is an easy one to get tripped on. They are two different streets. So West Office Center Drive only has that one building on it, that pharmaceutical place. Office Center Drive is the one that runs between Virginia and Camp Hill. Doesn't look like you can miss a hydrant on that map, page. Yeah. But again, just... <clears throat> That's where I have to watch myself, where I only kind of hear 80% of the information and I'm here in Office Center Drive and I kind of lock it in without really looking at the cross streets. If it was West Office Center Drive, the cross street would be between the cul-de-sac and Office Center Drive. So that would be the tip off. And we did reverse entries for all of the uh, letter streets down uh, off of uh, North Hills Avenue to make it a little, hopefully, easier as well to find. Because, you know, you, you might not think to look under A for Avenue G. You're just looking under G. So you'll find it in both places now. Here's an odd burn ball split that we did put into the book. Um, I just... This really kind of goes back to that talk about no zero point and also not even splitting the street by a cross street. If you take a look at Ascot coming in from Susquehanna, it takes you down to Tressler. You know, to your left is 1276, to your right is 1280. But across the street is 1259 and 1267. It's like, are you kidding me? So that Ascot should have made the numbers change. I, and I don't know, did they, which came first, a chicken or, I, I guess they were both put in at the same time, right? You would think Tressler and Ascot both got put in at the same time. But that's a really oddball split. So, Burn break, guys, just a heads up, and it, it's a little crazy to read there, but 1231 and 1259, odd mm -hmm. numbers you go right, 1280 and up, odd numbers go left. Ascot's uh, a newer street, and uh, Tressler is an older street, but they added a new section in that cul-de-sac. Okay. So that's, instead of stopping the numbers, <laughs> yeah, we should have gone to the 1300 block. Pay attention, man. Come on. They should have gone into the 1300 block or anything east of Ascot. And they just continued the numbering. But it didn't, I don't think it worked out real well. All right, that's that. Why is there so many buildings with the same address that it looks like? You, you have 1280 Dressler down three times, 1284 three times. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess this was a copy off of something, Rick, that I'm, I'm not quite sure. Good catch that, yeah, there's a lot of duplications. Um, this is off another program that uh, I took a screenshot off of. Um, so in reality, there's not two 1251 Tresslers. I just want to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> Uh, I'm not. All right. So next thing we did with uh, Run Roots is we added some developments. So <clears throat> Upper Dublin is not the land of development names. We did pick some out here, the most common. Um, so here's trivia. Clausen, you probably know these, so we'll ask you. What development is right behind the main station? What's the development called Hawthorne Lane? Anybody know that one? I don't know. Yeah. So if, that's why we didn't put it down, because nobody would know Fort Washington Manor. Schmitty, what neighborhood do you live in? No clue. That would be Fort Washington Farms. So... Upper Dublin's not a township. I'll go back to uh, Rathbon again, Chief. You got a great township that every development is named and every development name is used by its residents. So in Upper Murrian, everybody knows the difference between Belmont Hills, Lafayette Park, Canterbrook. Can and run, yeah, they all, and the cops yeah. refer them. To so them. they use those developments. Um, it's just a cultural thing. Um, we don't use many of them. So we grab some out, you know, some, some of the more common ones and I'll kind of show you which ones we threw in there. And just so you know where we're, where they're coming from. So Arrowhead, uh, Eric, jump in there for a minute. I'm running, I'm running out of fuel. <laughs> What do you need? Just tell us about Arrowhead real quick so I can take a break. India. I mean, they yeah, India. <laughs> Is there anything else? <laughs> there you go. Between Susquehanna and, and... No, I mean, everything comes in off of uh, Arrowhead Trail is your main, your main thoroughfare, and everything shoots off of that. Yeah. So, Got a lot of tight streets, turns. Yeah. Too. Any of those streets now in the run book, so if you go to look up Seneca Run, underneath... Seneca Run, it will say Arrowhead. So again, just makes it a little bit easier for you because uh, some of them, you know, Shawnee Green, since they're Indian names, they may be a little bit easier and might, might be your clue to get there. But some of these other developments, I'm hoping it, it makes it easier and <laughs> saves us a little bit time. At least you can get started in that direction. So Arrowhead is, is one development that's been put in there. Bel Air is the next. That's uh, Lime Kiln and Hal Lane. Not to be confused with Bel Air Avenue. Not to be confused with Bel Air Avenue, which is down off of Highland. But the uh, dead giveaway for Bel Air is Box 413A Alpha. There you go. Um, so any 3A we know is the Bel Air development. Birdland, so the streets with bird names um, off of Dresher Town and, and Lime Kiln by the middle school. So if you look up Skylark, it's going to say Birdland in it and then give the, the run route. Butler Park condos, uh, those streets are listed. Uh, now as well, although I don't believe, even though we show it in our map book, I don't believe we have any addresses on Kingsway, and we might only have, and I'm not even sure about Compton, uh, but certainly there's no Kingsway addresses, but we left it on the book just in case some old senile guy wanders in and uh, refers to Kingsway. Drexel Brook is next to Burn Bray, just two streets down there. 
Dresher Commons, this is a, an easy one to, to get tripped up on. Dresher Commons is a development, only two streets next to the CVS down on Susquehanna Road, the new townhouses. East Orland, any street in that development uh, is now listed as an East Orland address. North Hills. Regency. We'll do the same for the Enclave. We'll list all those streets as Enclave. Stewart Creek off of Fort Washington or, or Highland. You can get, you got to be careful with this one because you get, I guess, a black hole you could uh, confuses either a tree or a bird maybe right or an indian name yeah Roy, you, they, we got a black hole bird in there Are you... tannery wood up off of susquehanna a couple of presidents names in there willamere uh not a real common uh one but that's off of uh Willow Avenue, that's those brick townhouses in there. Something else unique about Willowmere too, right? Isn't that the cedar shake roofs? It is, yep. And then Washington- Limited access there too. Washington Manor's the new development off of Pennsylvania. The old uh, Emlyn Estate down there, or uh, just three streets. Zach, that's it. Eight twenty-five. We're going to call it. Call. Uh, call it there. Hey, Kev, for uh, Bel Air, for those old senile guys, you can remember that as uh, Three Tons Junior High School. There you go. On the side where Sylvester's barn used to be. <laughs> <laughs> so. and you, you missed Aiden there. Listen. Yeah. Again, we're just trying to. Uh, other than the townhouse developments, most of our developments don't have common names that people are familiar with. So happy to add them if any others, if, if folks think thinks that would be helpful, but they're, they're the ones that have been, uh, been put in there. Zach, hey, I, yield, I yield the floor at 826. Hey, Kevin, uh, Willow Manor is the, the one off of uh, Dale Road and uh, back behind the shopping center. Okay. I'd suggest the Willow Manor. That's pretty commonly known. Okay. Also, you have a Willow Avenue on either end of the township. One is in Willow Manor. 